paying extra to your mortgage to try to pay it off early is like one of the worst things you can actually do for your finances. What if I told you the more you pay the bank, the more risk you create for yourself and your money? When you pay more than the minimum or you move to bi-weekly payments or shorten your mortgage, it'll actually take you longer to pay off the mortgage and it's actually gonna put you in a riskier position. So don't trap your money in equity jail by paying extra to your mortgage. So let's look at it. Like let's just say you have two people and one person, they're doing the shorter mortgage, they're paying extra to it. Like I remember in high school, Mr. Moynier taught me this in math class, like you save interest with a shorter mortgage. So I rushed home to my mom and like, please tell me we have a short mortgage, we're paying extra. She's like, of course. That was our Italian kind of nature to do that. On the other side, let's say you have a neighbor with the same house or a similar house, same value, but they have a you know, interest only mortgage. They're not paying anything extra to it. They might even be paying late. But now the economy crashes and you and the neighbor aren't paying anything at all. The bank is actually incentivized to take the one with equity. They're just looking at the numbers. Who paid extra? Which one's gonna be easiest for them to turn around and get their cash back versus lose cash upon sale of it? So the other problem is if you do have a financial surprise, which let's face it, all of us are in store for financial surprises. So if we're gonna have a financial surprise and all of a sudden all of our money is locked away in our mortgage, banks love to lend money to people who don't need it. If you need the money, they're going, hey, we don't want to give you this money because you're in financial turmoil and trouble. We will go ahead and just take the home, sell it and take the equity because it's now ours. So when you pay extra, what I mean by equity jail is it's only available if you're in a great position. Maybe you have an equity line of credit against it or maybe you have a great credit score, an amazing cash flow. But if that ever changes, now all that extra money is locked away in there. And how do you get cash to make that payment? If on the other hand, you've been saving it on the side. There's no rule that says you have to pay you know, extra in order to pay off the loan. You can actually save up the money on the side, maximize your tax deductions along the way, have more options, stability, and control, and then when there's enough cash there, write it off in one fell swoop, one check to pay that off. Now, there's some things we have to do to make sure that happens. So this person, that paid late got rewarded versus the person that paid on time. This person had no equity, was in a safer position than the person with a lot of equity because the banks just look at the numbers, right? Not at the people. So as we break this down into a few parts, I'm just gonna go through a few pieces to help you identify what I'm talking about here. So if I'm willing to lend you money and I don't charge you interest, how much do you want? Hopefully you said as much as I'd give you, right? Now, how quick do you wanna pay me back? Maybe as slow as possible, right? Because I'm not charging any interest. Well, there's something that if you learn really can help you out called cost of money. Your cost of money is the highest rate of return you can get for a long period of time on your cash. Now for some, their cost of money is the cost they pay if they borrow money. If you have a 17% credit card, anytime you go and buy something else rather than pay that down, it's not just the dollar, it's the dollar plus the interest that you are now paying by not paying that down, that's cost of money. Or as an investor, it's the rate of return that you could earn, not in a short period of time, not as a one-time thing, but what you could count on, on a higher kind of guarantee, even though it might not be fully guaranteed, that you have a lot more certainty around for a long period of time. So let's just imagine this. If you had a 0% mortgage, then you might say, hey, I'm just gonna save up all my money. I can do better than 0% even in a savings account or a money market. And then when I have enough money, I'll pay that loan off versus paying extra to the bank. Or let's say it's only 1%. Some of you would probably still take as much as I'd give you and you'd still pay me back as slow as possible because your cost of money, what you could earn on your money is greater than 1%. Now, if I said it was 10%, all of a sudden pretty much everyone's, you know, their answers change. They go, wait, 10%. That's a lot more expensive. I want to pay it back as fast as possible. I'm only going to take you know, what I know I can do better than 10% with, which might be paying off and refinancing a credit card. So know your cost of money. And there's no real magic when it comes to mortgages and finances like a lot of people kind of were taught that there is. Let's demystify that for a minute. Imagine you can pay cash and you don't have to have a mortgage or you can finance for 15 years or 30 years. If your cost of money is the same rate that actually the interest rate is to the bank, then it doesn't matter. Let me say this even more clearly. You're always paying interest. Whether you pay cash and you forfeit the right to earn your interest, that's opportunity cost, or whether you borrow money and you pay the bank interest. If you could earn the same as you pay, it's now just a matter of choice and preference. So if you paid $100,000 to buy something, right, you can't earn interest on that the next 30 years, 
That's your cost of interest, is the interest of what that money would have grown to. On the other hand, if you financed it for 30 years at that same interest rate, you would actually pay interest in that amount you'd pay over the 30 years would be the same as what you would have earned right, on the other money. So it's a wash. There isn't magic to this. What you earn versus what you pay. Now, if those numbers change, like if you have a really high interest rate, maybe the very best thing that you could do is that you could either restructure it or refinance it, or if it was a very, very high loan that every time you paid it down, your payment went down, you might just want to pay extra directly to that loan. But on a mortgage, we're typically looking at an amortized loan. You pay extra and your payment stays the same even though the balance goes down. That's the notion of how you create equity, Joe. So what can you do instead? Number one, set up a separate account to capture the money you'd normally pay extra to the loan. You can just put this in a savings or a checking account, right? You just don't want to have it commingled with your personal funds because if it is, maybe you end up accidentally spending it. There's something called Parkinson's Law that says as your expenses go up or as your income goes up, your expenses rise to meet or exceed that. So we want to make sure that we've separated that. Imagine if I had like a glass of milk and I pour chocolate in it. As soon as I stir that, that's commingled. It's chocolate milk now. Hard to unring that bell. Can't just unstir that cup. Same thing happens with our finances. So you set up a separate account and you automatically have it go to that account just like it was going extra to the loan. Now you may even want to start looking at other loans and I have videos on how to determine your cash flow index that you could watch to figure out which loans to pay more to if you are going to do that to do it in the most efficient and safe manner. But the second thing is, savings accounts and money markets, they have measly returns. So you have to pay tax on them. They may not be protected from financial predators. So if you want to increase the return on your money and you can look at it a little bit more long term, we need a few years for this to work out, then you can actually use cash flow banking. So you can look at cashflowbanking.com, even schedule a one-on-one -on -one session and even download some great material on it. It's a way that we do the similar thing that the banks do. When you put money in a bank, they have to put a certain percentage of that in reserves. They take a percentage of that reserve and they put it into cash value insurance type policies. So what if you took your money, you'd have to design it similar to how the bank was doing it. That's what cash flow banking is about. Design it where it's heavy cash, but now maybe you can get four or 5% instead of one or 2%, not pay taxes rather than pay taxes, be protected from creditors versus not protected from creditors and still have access to your money along the way with those tax advantages. That's what cashflowbanking.com could do is then when there's enough money in there, the third step here is, now that you've built liquidity, you can build up enough cash in there and then you can just pay it off at one time by using the money in your cash value, right? If that cash value is earning similar or more than what it's costing you for your line of credit or that's costing you for your mortgage, you're actually going to get there faster, not slower. Plus, you might have some tax advantages that can help you along the way. But don't let the tax tail wag the dog. Don't make the tax advantage be the number one reason. I want you to look at the interest. I want you to look at access to your money. I want you to look at control over your money. And then look at the tax advantages on the cash, the tax advantages of having a mortgage. And there are other things that you can do beyond this that might even help you out. Like sometimes people have private mortgage insurance. That's because you have less than 20% equity when you went to buy your home. By refinancing, you might be able to eliminate private mortgage insurance, which could save you money. Or you could do another strategy where you use a line of credit, like a line of credit against the mortgage for the down payment portion to get you under 80% and then the rest in a normal mortgage. And then you can use something called velocity banking, it's been called by people, or I used to call it a HELOC buy down, home equity line of credit, where you take all of your bills and you take all of, you put them on a credit card and then you pay as much down on the home equity line of credit and then you use the home equity line of credit to pay off the credit cards before being charged a single penny. And what you do is you start using the bank's money instead of your own. I'll do more on that to come. But really, if you want to pay off your mortgage early, keep control of your money. Set an automatic way to pay that money that's going to the mortgage into an account. Look at a really high interest rates and pay those off first with other loans. Look and see if you can do cashflowbanking.com to get a similar or better return, hopefully, than what it's costing you in your mortgage, but it needs to be a few years before that, stop, that really pans out. It's not a really short-term thing. We're looking at a solution, hopefully, of if it takes you 30 years to pay off a mortgage, saving you five to seven years on that mortgage, and uh, you know, keeping a lot more control over that money. And if you end up getting more cash in the future, you can put even more money into your cash flow banking and even pay off the loan faster than that. But if you're trying to pay off your mortgage early, the worst thing you could do is give the bank extra. It puts you at risk. It doesn't lower your payment. 
And a lot of people end up moving and refinancing. And unfortunately, when they need access to that cash, it's now the bank that's get, it's the guarding of the money versus yourself. So keep more control of your money. Keep your options open. Maximize the tax savings. And then return, off, return to pay off your home when you have the cash set aside. It's going to be much safer and in most cases so much quicker. So you now have the knowledge to transform your thoughts into profits and build the life that you love. If you're looking for more on this topic, check out this video on the seven ways to make money during the recession. Another way to protect your cash and to improve your situation and where cash flow banking can come in. You know what? You can go ahead and click here and I'll see you there. It's time to eliminate worry and scarcity. I don't want you to drown in that, but guess what? If you follow the tried and true advice with these seven items, you're gonna come out on top.